Hello everyone and welcome. So today's project, I'm going to try and take this shotgun, which is the cheapest available firearm I could find, other than maybe if I had a friend or a pawn shop or something. Um, but brand new, this is $99 from Walmart, very slightly by location. Um, but it's a single shot, break action, no frills, nothing fancy about it. And I want to take this gun and make it into the most useful, practical, and comprehensive survival kit possible. Now obviously this is not the stock shotgun, I've already done all the work, but I'm going to try and show you what I did. The original gun, just so you know, would not have a flashlight switch on it, would not have a shoulder strap pre-installed, and would have a longer barrel about that long. A lot of the ideas that I used here came from other YouTubers, so make sure you go check out those videos if you are looking for some more inspiration, some more ideas. There's definitely some good ideas I didn't go with. Uh, I started out with looking at how much storage space I can get out of this shotgun, because I want to put as much survival equipment as possible in this one package. So in the foregrip, uh, as it comes from the manufacturer, these three sections would be filled in. But I used a flat-ended drill bit and made these two slots and that little compartment back there. Then in the stock from the manufacturer, this hole here, which as you can see in there has the bolt on it that attaches the stock. And I added this hole. There's room in between there and the screw hole to put in another little compartment there. And uh, it's that deep, you know, it's as deep as my finger, so about that far. Normally, this would have another wood screw holding that in, but if you just file away a little bit of the stock, then you can make a compartment that's pretty easy to just bend the plastic slightly to lift this, uh, this nub out of the hole. So it makes a secure storage that uh, securely snaps shut but you can access whenever you need it. So that's all of the internal storage you can get out of this, really. But if you purchase one of these ammo sleeves, you can slide it on here onto the stock. And of course, that allows you to carry more ammunition. But also, uh, I slid a couple of these condoms I use as water bags, or wood in an emergency. I've never actually used them that way. Uh, but you can tape them down to the stock and slide the sleeve right over. Then of course you've got the barrel, which I actually shortened this barrel. The, the legal minimum is an 18 inch barrel and for break action shotguns that's measured from the uh, back of the action, which is just the obvious barrel length you would measure here. But I want it to fold down nicely uh, where the barrel and stock are even with each other, rather than going for the minimum length. So the final place that you have a little bit of storage, uh, of course you can attach a barrel mounted flashlight, but you also, uh, if you want to have a shoulder strap, which I'd recommend if you're going to try and bug out with it, you want to be able to sling it over your shoulder and travel quickly. Uh, I just went ahead and made a shoulder strap. These two cords come all the way up and connect to the top. They tie directly to this buckle. Then I did a cobra hitch, I believe that's what it's called. You can look it up on any number of paracord channels. Uh, but I did a one layer and then a second layer of this paracord hitch to uh, make a nice, thick, semi-padded shoulder strap. But if you need to, you can take off all of that paracord, all of this here, and you're still left with a semi-functional strap, although it would cut into your shoulder. So now, just a couple notes about the fabrication of the firearm. I already told you about uh, how you can make this into a hatch that pops open easily in the field. It's a little more difficult with one hand, but there you go. And drilling and threading in this eye bolt here. But the other thing is that 
out of the box. This trigger guard is going to interfere with the slot and only let it fold in about this far. So I just went at it with a little file, a little small round file and made this a little more chamfered here so that the trigger guard can fit down all the way flush on both ends to the point where this eye bolt won't let it fold any further. And that nicely leaves just about the right space there for my bare mounted flashlight. So some guys I've seen have been filing away at the trigger guard. They've done some pretty major cutting, but I just went ahead and filleted these corners there to give myself a little more room. Then to attach the shoulder strap, I went ahead and made it, added a buckle to it. Of course that's optional, but it is nice, nice to have. And then on this buckle, uh, I added a screw. So normally there's a small Phillips screw that goes in there normally, but I took this flat-headed screw, thumb screw, that's what it's called. I took this little thumb screw, drilled a hole through it so I could get a, fit a paracord strand through there. And uh, that's another perk of having this be a short end with the buckle on it, is that it's much easier to thread on this way. Because you have to be able to unscrew this screw to uh, take off the shoulder strap. Now an alternative would be you put a thumb screw there and then maybe you put another eye bolt here to connect to your shoulder strap so that way you can take off the thumb screw even easier. But then you're sacrificing a bit of storage space. So if you have the ability to put a buckle on there, I would recommend it. So you can see this slot goes all the way to the very end. And I also started out with the buckle down here at this end and uh, had the long end of the strap connect up here. But I had to actually go back and redo this whole thing because I found that it was way too inconvenient to try and unscrew. But then also, if you ever try to fire it unbuckled, you're gonna have this whole dangling snake here hanging from the front of your foregrip. And that, I found, made it far too difficult to aim. This little guy, you can't even feel it swinging back and forth. And back here, it's uh, close to your center of rotation, so it doesn't cause any issues. So if you're gonna make a uh, unbuckling shoulder strap, definitely put the buckle on this end. Just a couple other really minor things. Uh, out of the box mine was really stiff during the break and not a pleasure to use at all but you just use a flathead screwdriver there and it makes quick work. And to cut off the barrel I just used a hacksaw and a little file to clean up the edges. You want to make sure you get uh, any, any burrs off of the inside of the barrel especially. Okay, so this is the actual loadout of all the survival items that fit on this shotgun, not including the shotgun itself, of course. Now, there's a million and one things that people will suggest you bring. I actually went through and made a list of uh, several different survival item checklists and then boiled it down to these items. So, there's a few categories of needs that you really want to keep your priorities straight in any survival situation. Safety, shelter and warmth, water, uh, and if you have water available then contact is your next highest priority. And then if all else fails you need access to food. So obviously I included ammunition for the shotgun. Um, if, if you wanted a survival kit without ammunition then you may as well just use a bag. Uh, you could fit all of this in a pretty small pouch, so obviously you want a good amount of ammunition. Eight of these fit in the ammo sleeve and one fits in the chamber. Uh, another thing you might be a little surprised to see here is these 22 rounds, but I bought this 
a barrel adapter, which is able to put the 22 off center in the barrel so that a center fire pin will hit the rim of this rim fire cartridge. And uh, another thing you may notice here about this adapter is that it's pretty short. So it's not terribly accurate. I will do a test of the accuracy to give you an idea of the grouping that it gives. But suffice to say, not super accurate. Now they do sell a longer version. I think it's about two and a half times this length. This one is identical in shape and proportion to a 20 gauge shotgun shell. But the downside of the longer one is that storage would be difficult. You know, it's not super practical for survival scenarios because unless you're expecting the Nazis to invade or something, you're not going to be in a situation where you're scavenging for ammunition. You're going to be in some kind of a wilderness survival or a uh, natural disaster scenario. And you're probably not going to be coming across 22s laying around anyway. But it does add a certain element of fun. It's kind of fun to shoot two different uh, rounds, two different kinds of ammunition out of the same gun. And it fits nicely in this hole here. Now, of course, if you didn't want to do this, if you wanted to try and be a little more practical, you could use this space for another uh, shotgun shell, or maybe you could get a small Mylar blanket in there or something. That is one thing that's missing from this kit is any kind of uh, personal warmth, although you've got paracord, you've got duct tape, so you could try and make some kind of shelter out of that. So moving on to the shelter, I had considered making the shoulder strap out of a cloth I have here. This is a gift I got from a friend who was in the military in, over in Middle East. Um, but I figured paracord has more versatile use. I went ahead and used the mass of the of the shoulder strap to carry more cordage. This is about 50 feet. Uh, along the lines of shelter, you obviously need to be able to warm yourself. So this lighter is um, cylindrical, so I was able to wrap duct tape around it and put it in the bolt hole there in the stock, which is better than most of those oval shaped lighters and of course some duct tape. So fire starting, a knife, a compass, a flashlight, those are some real basic survival necessities. Uh, I, I went ahead and in the spirit of being able to collect food with this, you know, because you've got a few options for hunting there, I went ahead and um, included some fishing line. So, uh, and a few fishing hooks. It's just super compact and tiny. Um, you can always find a stick out in the wild, or you could potentially use the shotgun, although that's pretty obvious, the fish would see that. But you might, in a real pinch, be able to use it. Uh, another way to collect food is if you come across cans, or you have some cans in your back of your car or wherever, you're gonna need to be able to open them if they don't have those easy open handles on them. So this is just a super compact can opener I was given way back years ago in Boy Scouts. I picked up this flashlight on Amazon. I've got the link uh, in the description because it works pretty nice. Definitely bright. Um, it helps make this a more useful home defense weapon, but also anytime you're out in the wilderness, you could use light to be able to get around at night. Uh, and it, it mounts very cleanly to the barrel shotgun with this this guy here it's very, pretty flexible to different diameters of barrels and such uh, also this this compass here weighs practically nothing I've actually got a second one where I popped it out of the casing that it came in and hot glued it to the bottom of the lighter so you know it's not a not a high-tech navigation compass but it'll at least tell you if you're heading in generally the right direction money is always helpful you know if you're trying to escape a earthquake or something and uh, you, you may well be in need of some some supplies maybe there's a store still open uh, but your the electricity is out if you have some cash you can uh, you can still buy stuff so and then using condoms for water bags it's a little bit weird but uh, 
they're made to be stretchy and strong and the quality control on them is really tight so they're definitely waterproof and they fit in a nice compact package so it gives you the ability to collect some water and then I have these water purification tablets that uh, it's iodine and then a flavor neutralizer so now packing it all together this is just a little bitty strip of metal here I folded so it's kind of an eye shape made a tiny spindle and wrapped a bunch of fishing line around it you can only get a little bit on there but it's probably 10 or 20 feet of it and then it will definitely try to spring back there's nothing you can do about that so I wrapped some tape around it and that fits in this little space that's useful for just about nothing else um, in, in the front compartment you can get the can opener and a Swiss Army knife that kind of wedges in there and then in this middle compartment is where the 22 shells go so the pattern I put these rounds in is this alternating shape here two on the sides and then one in the middle on top of those and that allows you to cram in 12 rounds here with, and it'll still fit on the gun. So once you get two layers in there, you might have to kind of shake it back and forth a little bit to get them to settle to an optimum level, but they'll definitely fit. You can get 12 rounds in there. And then the 13th round, just store it in the chamber. I'll take the lighter and the water purification pills and slide them in like that. Now to get them out, you do have to kind of pick the gun up and shake it a little bit so that this falls out enough that you can pull on it. Uh, you want to be careful and not whack the gun too much in case of an accidental discharge. So you don't want to pack too much duct tape on there so that it gets stuck. You want to make sure and leave it pretty easy to, pretty free to slide in and out. Now to go in the hole that I drilled, I'll take the adapter with one round, put it in it, shove that all the way in, and that leaves you with about half an inch. Of course, you could drill the hole a little bit of a different depth, uh, and that's just enough space if you really tightly roll this up to fit a couple of dollar bills. You gotta really roll it up tight there, but once it is, you should be able to shove it in the hole. And close the stock up. Okay, now to reinstall this, you don't want to tip it over, so you just gotta carefully lift it up, put that in first, and then pop it into position. And then it kind of holds itself in, which gives you a second to grab the screw. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and buckle up the strap. And then on this end, is where I keep the compass. I just hung it over my shoulder and checked to see where it would be easy to see the compass from while I'm carrying it on my shoulder. So right about here. Just thread it through under one of the cords, pull it out so you have as much loop as possible, then you're gonna duck this guy through there. Once you've got it through the loop, just pull it. Finally, just the flashlight, ammunition, and the water bags. The most sleeve I got was this $5 thing from Walmart. They had two versions. This one is actually for rifle ammunition, and they had another one for shotguns that only had five loops in it. But I went ahead and got this with the nine loops. And I'm only able to cram in four on each side and I leave the middle one empty. Um, you probably would not be able to do that with 12 gauge, but with the 20 gauge you're just able to squeeze it in there into these small loops and then over time it stretches them out and it's actually pretty easy to work with. Uh, so let me get this ammunition in here. There it is. The last couple are always pretty tight to get in there because there's really not technically enough room for them but uh, it allows me to maximize how much ammunition I can carry. Before I put that on the stock here is I want to get my water bags taped <laughs> under where they're going to go. Uh, so this I'm gonna just use a little bit of duct tape to hold them in, uh, in place, and then the ammo sleeve will keep them from being ripped off. All right, so this is one width of duct tape. I just cut in the fourths and 
put the strips on, and I like to put it diagonally. That way the tape doesn't overlap. It doesn't have to go as far lengthwise. So I'll just press it down. Okay, so I got all the tape nice and adhered. And you can just check and make sure that the sleeve's gonna be long enough to cover it. In this case, definitely yes. Now I like the actual shells to be on the outside of my grip when I'm right-handed. So I'm gonna get it lined up and start to feed it down along the length of the gun. It's a little faster with two hands. There you go. Got it on all the way. Last step is I'm gonna install this flashlight on the barrel. So I'm gonna begin by slipping the little rail adapter on there. Tighten it down. And I went ahead and lined up the mount so the flashlight would be roughly even with the end of the barrel. And I'll just clip on the flashlight and tighten that down too. I have the flashlight on there. Of course you gotta swap out the button for this wired version. I actually had to feed the wire back through itself and uh, that shortened it up so that it would be right in position from where my hand's going to be. To attach the button to the grip, I just used some of that double-sided wall hanging tape, uh, command strips, there's a lot of names for it, uh, but just pressed that down and it's holding on well enough. So there you go, fits and folds up into this nice neat package here. Now, I'm just going to toss it in my backpack, turn off the flashlight, toss it on in here, along with some more ammo, safety glasses and hearing protection, and when we are ready to go test it out.